Well, good morning, everyone. It's um, my pleasure to be able to share with you some of my thoughts on controlling broiler house litter moisture the early weeks. So really what we're talking about is how do we con best control litter moisture during the, eh, let's say, first third of a flock. To control house litter moisture, we essentially have to base our minimum ventilation rates off of the amount of water the birds are adding to the house each day. Essentially, whatever the birds drink each day, that's what we need to remove each day. It's a balancing act. You start off with some good dry litter, and if every day you remove the moisture the birds added to the litter, you will maintain a constant litter moisture and have much better control over air quality and bird health. Now, how do we determine how much we need to ventilate to remove the water the birds are adding to the house each day? Under typical wintertime conditions, and that's always the dangerous one, under typical wintertime conditions where it's 27 degrees inside the house with a humidity of 50%, that would be average over the course of the flock, and it's about 55 degrees outside with 50% humidity, we need to exchange approximately 100 cubic meters of air to remove one liter of water from a house. So if a water meter indicates that a thousand liters of water flowed into a house on a given, given day, we simply have to ventilate to remove a thousand liters of water. They add it, we remove it. So to do so, we need to exchange 100 cubic meters for every liter, so it's simple 1,000 times 100, that's 100,000 cubic meters of air we need to exchange each day, or in terms of cubic meters per hour, divided by 24, we come up with 4,170 cubic meters per hour. So we would have to operate essentially a 40 centimeter fan constantly over the course of the day to remove 1,000 liters of water using that rule of thumb. Now, what if conditions are not typical? How do minimum ventilation rates vary with inside and outside conditions varying? And we developed an app for that. The app is called Poultry 411. It's available for Android phones and um, for iPhones free of charge. You open the app, you click on calculators. There's two calculators. We're gonna click on minimum ventilation. And when you open this up, the calculator will ask for the outside temperature and humidity, the inside temperature and target humidity, the amount of moisture to removed per day, and that's generally determined by your water meter, which, you know, think about it, your best indicator of how much you need to ventilate is just how much water flowed in the house, more water, more ventilation. But we're gonna give a precise number with this app. And, you put in the fans you want to use for minimum ventilation. And so we can determine how much they need to run to remove the given amount of water on the conditions that we input. So hit that calculate button, we get the number. So let's say an example, broiler house, 14 day old birds, inside conditions, 27 degrees, 50% humidity. Outside, it's five degrees and 50% humidity. And we know that the daily water consumption is 4,500 liters. Now, what's important here? I don't care how many birds are in the house. To me, it just doesn't matter. You could have pigs in that house for that matter, horses, cattle, it doesn't matter. All I need to know is how much water is going into that house to control or to balance my ventilation in a way that I can remove the water the birds are adding. And we're gonna use, in this example, three 90 centimeter exhaust fans at 17,000 cubic meters per hour each. And that's what we're gonna use for minimum ventilation. So the question is, how much do I have to run those fans to remove that 4,500 liters of water? So outside conditions, five degrees, 50% humidity. Put that in there. The minus sign, if you really wanna get some really cold weather, you can click on that and give a minus um, Celsius degree. Inside, oh, excuse me, now, the first thing it will do as soon as you enter that, it will tell you how many milliliters of water there is in each cubic meter of air outside. So outside, in every cubic meter, there are 3.2 milliliters of water contained. You can't see it, but it's there. Next, we're gonna put in our inside conditions. 27 degrees C, 
target humidity of 50%, and the, the app will immediately show you how much water there is in every cubic meter of air. So outside, in every cubic meter of air, there's 3.2 milliliters of water. Inside, at the same humidity, there's 13.4 milliliters of water per cubic meters. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind, we can talk hours about, but I already got 20 minutes, is that the amount of moisture in the air is relative to temperature. It's called relative humidity. So at five degrees, the air is half full. At 27 degrees, it's half full of water, but the amount of water warm air can hold is a lot more than cold air. So that's what we have so far. Let's look at the moisture removal process. Here we have a house full of birds. They're drinking 4,500 liters of water a day. They're adding moisture to the air and to the litter. We bring in a cubic meter of air. We're bringing in water. Yes, whenever we ventilate, we're bringing in moisture. We're bringing in 3.2 milliliters of moisture. But if we bring in a cubic meter, that means we need to take out a cubic meter. We bring in 3.2, we exhaust 13.4. So for every cubic meter of air we exchange, we remove 10.3 milliliters of moisture. The app does the calculation. We say we have 4,500 now. We're going to put in, we're going to run three fans that in total move 17,000 cubic, I mean, that run in total, excuse me, 51,000 cubic meters of air per hour. Hit calculate, boom, and we get our number. We know that we need to ventilate at a rate of 18,383 cubic meters per hour to remove that much moisture. If we're running those fans on a five minute timer, that means they need to run 108 seconds on, 192 seconds off. Or if we're doing a percentage time of some other type of time, they need to run 36% of the time. Now the rule of thumb, remember, it was for every liter, we need to exchange 100 cubic meters. So we could actually do the same calculation, the old fashioned way with our rule of thumb, rule of thumb that's 4.5 million cubic meters of air per day. We divide that by 24 and we come up with 18,750. So really what's interesting, under those typical wintertime conditions, both methods come up with the same number. Now, though the app can be used to come up with a minimum ventilation rate estimate on any given day of a flock, from my perspective, one of the more useful ways to use the app is to explore how changing inside conditions affect minimum ventilation rates. It's sort of like what Mark was talking about. Well, when you change the outside weather, you change the moisture holding ability there, which changes the drying time of the litter. And we're talking about the same thing here. Outside conditions change, that means our minimum ventilation rates need to change to dry the litter. So for instance, class's argument. How would the minimum ventilation rate change on a rainy day? I don't know how many growers say, I need to ventilate less because I don't want to pull that moisture into the air. Well, let's look at our app. Again, 14 day old birds, inside 27 degrees, 50% humidity, outside five degrees at 100% humidity. Put those conditions in the app, five degrees, 100% humidity. Now, what do we have in it? There's 6.5 milliliters in every cubic meter. Even though the humidity is 100%, there's 6.5, there's not a huge number amount of water in that air. So we look at that, we compare that to what it was before. Before it was 3.2. So at 50% humidity, there's 3.2. At 100%, surprise, surprise, there's roughly twice as much, which means what? We're gonna have to ventilate more. Under these conditions, for every cubic meter air exchange, we're only removing about seven milliliters of water. Remember before, it was 10.3. We were more efficient at it before because we we're pulling in drier air. Yes, now it's wetter, but we can still dry out the house. We just have to ventilate more. Hit the calculation button, we will learn. I have to ventilate about 50% more, roughly in these conditions, when it's on a rainy day, cool rainy day versus a cool dry day. What if it was colder? No, that's not Georgia, that is South Dakota. Now, 14 day old birds, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the target outside temperature. That's all we're gonna to change to zero degrees. Put that in there, zero, 50. Now look at how much moisture in the air. It's a lower number now. The colder the air, 
the drier it will always be. Because in general, because cold air can't hold much moisture. That's why we use hot air to dry things out, because cold air is really lousy at it. So, again, not much moisture in that air now. So to compare it now, for every cubic meter of air we exchange, we remove 11.1 .1 milliliters of water removed. We're removing more water because there's a bigger difference in litter moisture between inside and outside because it's colder outside now. The colder it gets, what do you figure out? The less you have to ventilate. In this case, the outside temperature dropping from five to zero degrees, we have to ventilate 8% less. Now, here's the problem, especially in a way for you having warmer climates. What if it's warmer? All we're gonna do now is change the outside temperature to 20 degrees, 50% humidity, same inside conditions. Now, look at it, 20 degrees, 50% humidity. There's a lot of water in that air. The warmer it is, the more moisture the air can hold, and the more likely the air outside will have a lot of water in it. So, again, 8.7 now, 3.2 before. There's less of a difference. Now, for every cubic meter of air exchange, we're only removing 5.3. Remember, before it was 10.3. So now, what does that tell you? When it's 20 degrees outside, we have to, our minimum ventilation rates have to double to be able to remove that same amount of moisture. What if we want to change the target? Mark was talking about running different humidity levels to be able to dry out that litter, you know, the drier air, easier to do. What if we want to change our target to really dry our litter out faster? Okay, here are our 14-day-old birds, five degrees outside, 50% humidity. We're gonna change the target inside. So again, five degrees outside, 50% humidity. Now we're 27 degrees at 50, that's what we've been doing. What if we drop it to 40%? The air inside now has less moisture, and there's less of a difference between inside and outside, which means what? Surprise, surprise, to run the lower humidity, you have to ventilate more. Do 60%, there's a bigger difference between inside and outside, and we can ventilate less. But keep in mind, that gets the moisture out of the house. But if this humidity is too high, then we can't get the moisture out of the litter. So what does this do for ventilation rates? Let's compare those. And what do we learn? There's less moisture in the air when it's 40% humidity, so it's easy to get it out of litter, but we have to ventilate more, in a sense, to get it out of the house. 60%, there's more moisture in the air, so we have a bigger difference. So it means we need, we could ventilate less. So let's look at the three scenarios. For 50% humidity, it's 18,000 cubic meters per hour. For 40% humidity, we have to ventilate at 25,000 cubic meters per hour. And for 60% humidity, it's 14,000. So for here, we're talking a 36% increase in ventilation from here to there. To drop the humidity from 50% to 40%, our ventilation rate has to go up about almost 40%. But if we let our humidity get up to 60%, we can ventilate less. There's a reason we ventilate less than we should. Because to keep the house dry, to really be able to pull the moisture out of the litter, we need a higher ventilation rate. If we just reduce our minimum ventilation rate, or we can have a higher humidity with the a reduced ventilation rate, but we can't get the moisture out of the litter. Now, since heating cost is tied to ventilation rate, roughly 80% of our heating cost can be tied to ventilation. Yep, dropping the house target humidity from 50 to 40% will probably increase your heating cost 30%. Now, if you wanna get a house wet and sort of damp and your litter's wet and a little bit more ammonia, yes, you can save some fuel by about 20% by letting the humidity drift up, but again, now we're gonna run into bird health problems. So in summary, the real short part of this, during cold weather, minimum ventilation, minimum ventilation rates can be decreased because the outside air 
tends to contain less moisture. During moderate to more warm weather, minimum ventilation rates need to be doubled to remove excess moisture from a house because the outside air tends to contain more moisture. On cool rainy days, there's still more moisture in the air inside the house than outside, but minimum ventilation rates may need to be increased by 50%, up to 100% to take into account the additional moisture in the outside air. Decreasing the target humidity from 50 to 40% may require minimum ventilation rates to be increased 40%. Increased target relative humidity from 50 to 60% may require the minimum ventilation rates to be decreased by 20%. My point is this, to a large extent, a lot of times when you hear minimum ventilation recommendations, they were developed for a climate when the outside temperature is about five degrees C. So if during wet, during the times of the year, if you have an outside temperature of around five degrees C, the recommended ventilation rates that you hear from primary breeders and publications basically are gonna be okay. But the more the climate varies from five degrees C, especially on the warm side, the more those ventilation rates are gonna be too low. Now, it's important to realize that again, the app provides only a rough estimate. It's not a perfect thing. How much fresh air we actually need to remove the, uh, each liter of water the birds add to the house each day will vary with things like house tightness, stratification, inlet performance, how much the temperature humidity are changing over the course of the day, level of air movement, um, is the air next to the floor still like Mark was talking about, and water meter accuracy. The fact is, the best way to determine a minimum ventilation rate for any house is to use the app to provide a starting point possibly, and then just adjust the minimum ventilation rate based on the current relative humidity. Check it first thing in the morning. Your target's really between about 40 and 60%. That's what we're shooting for. Now, again, 40% is drier litter, but what else is it gonna be? Higher heating cost. 60% is everything's gonna be a little Damper, we're more likely we're gonna have some pall burns, we're more likely to have some ammonia, but we'll save gas. That's the balancing act. It's your point, it's your responsibility to pick which one. If it's above 60%, you're probably ventilating two liter and you're gonna get wet floors in probably between three and five days. If it's below 40%, you're probably ventilating too much. You're removing more moisture than the birds are adding and you're basically gonna get a dusty house and you're gonna have higher heating costs. This is not what we wanna see, the target humidity increasing over the first 10 days. That means the birds are adding more moisture than you're removing. This is what we wanna see. It's not gonna be a perfectly flat line. It will vary somewhat with outside conditions. But keep in mind, if it's raining, what do we need to do? Increase our ventilation rates and we'll be able to bring this humidity back down. So this situation, moisture added equals moisture removed. Now, when we look at all these factors that determine the accuracy of our measurement, house tightness, stratification, inlet performance, level air movement, all of those are related to ventilation. The app gives us a, just a guess how accurate the app is and our ability to control a moisture will depend to a large extent how our uh, inlet system is working. The better the inlet systems are working, the more we can dry out the incoming air the more um, we'll be able to pull moisture from litter, and et cetera, uh, et cetera. But how well an air inlet system works depends to a large extent on house tightness. I can say to bring in whatever amount of air, but if all the air is coming through cracks at the floor and not through the inlets, this will not dry litter. It's the quality of the air we're bringing in as much as the quantity, the less a good job we do of heating that incoming air, the more air it's gonna to take to be able to remove litter moisture. Now we believe our houses are tight, but are they? How do we precisely know how tight a house is? And how does a specific level of house tightness correlate with the effectiveness of the house inlet system? And guess what? We have an app for that. Same app, hit calculators. Now we're gonna hit house leakage area calculator. This will calculate how much leakage is in the house and tell you how that leakage is gonna affect your inlet system. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna put in the length, the width, 
the fan capacity, we do in a leakage test. And all we do in a leakage test is close everything up tight, turn on a fan and measure the pressure. So we're gonna put in what fan we're using, how much air it moves, and we're gonna uh, put in the static pressure measure. So let's do a quick example, 15 by 150 meter broiler house, everything closed up tight. 15 by uh, 150 by 15. We're gonna use, generally I tell people we like to run about one CFM per square foot of floor space or 20 cubic meters per hour per square foot of floor space. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's generally what I'm looking to do while running my test. So in this case, we're gonna say our fans, we're gonna turn on those three 90 centimeter fans that move about 51,000 cubic meters per hour. And let's say I've measured a pressure of about 30 pascals. Put that in there, hit calculate, and what does it tell us? First, it tells us the house leakage area is 1.9 square meters. Then it tells us the relative leakage area so I can compare house tightness from one farm to another. And that tells us for every thousand square meters of floor space, I have 0.85 square meters of leakage and it will give me a score. Red is bad. Here we have a rating. That rating, if we look at our uh, scale here, telling us from good to bad, that's a bad rating. So how would that Per, uh, rating affect the performance of our minimum ventilation system. On the bottom half of that same little page, there's some more information to put in. We're going to put in our minimum ventilation fan capacity. So let's say well, for the first week, we're going to run two fans for minimum ventilation. Put that in there, 34,000 cubic meters per hour. Next, we have to put in some information about our inlet system. Let's say we have 120 inlets that are about 30 by 45 centimeters, and we're gonna use those for minimum ventilation. So we put in, we're gonna use 120 inlets. They're 30 centimeters high. They're 45 centimeters long when they're fully open. And we're gonna calculate, boom. For this fan capacity, the fans need this much area to feed them. So for those two 90 centimeter fans, we need about a half a meter of inlet area. What the spreadsheet will do is take into account how much leakage you have and then figure out how much your inlets have to open to meet the total requirement because that 0.56 square meters is both leakage and the inlets. The more leakage, the less the inlets open. In this case, they're only going to open one centimeter and only 20% of my air will enter through my inlets. How about a tighter house? 60 pascals during our pressure test. We did a pressure test with the three fans. We got 60 pascals. What does it tell us? One square meter of leakage is what we need to feed those fans. Excuse me, that's the total leakage area. It's gone down. Relative leakage area is 0.46. Give it a rating. Now we're up towards excellent. So again, there's our leakage area. There's a relative leakage area, much higher rating. Now we put in our minimum ventilation, two fans that move 34,000 cubic meters per hour, 120 inlets, this is their dimensions, hit calculate. Now we find out the you know, total inlet required to feed those two fans is 1.4 square meters. Now, because the house is much tighter, they're gonna open up three centimeters. And now we have 60% of our air coming through our inlets. We're gonna be much more efficient at drying the air because more air is moving along the ceiling, heating up and drying out. Looser house, it's a little disaster here. Now we only get 25 pascals. Put that in here, hit calculate, and guess what? Our relative leakage area, we get a very poor rating. Put in our fans, I mean our inlets. And what do we find out? 0.6 uh, centimeters is how much the units are going to open. The percentage of the air will coming through the units is only 13%. The fact is, the tighter the house is, the better the inlet system will work, and the easier it is to control moisture. It's simple as that. We can, it's not how much air we bring in, it's the quality of air we bring in. So the keys to controlling litter moisture from the beginning of a flock or that first third, number one, ventilate based off of your conditions and water consumption. 
using the app as a starting point and tweaking it with house humidity. To maximize the effectiveness of units in the inlet system, make sure your house is tight. The other two big items are keep your birds spread out as much as possible and make sure you have adequate air movement over the litter at all times. And I didn't have time to talk about that, so I'm gonna let Connie Mo talk about it in July. So she'll be covering those points because it takes all of those things to keep our litter dry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Mike, we might slip straight into the questions. Um, how do you keep the moisture level at, of 50% during cold at 14 days because chicks are getting chilled with the high airspeed? Again, it goes, I think it goes back to a lot of what I'm talking about. The, with the inlet system properly set and a tight house, the fact is, if we can get the majority of the air to enter through our inlets and direct it along the ceiling properly, we should be, we should be better able not to chill the birds because by the time the air gets to the floor, the temperature will have warmed up. And that's the key. If it's all coming through the cracks, every time the fans come on, the house gets cold. We, we, and we, the heaters come on and all the heat goes up to the ceiling and does nothing. When we have a really tight house and the inlet system is working right, then we're much better able to ventilate more without chilling the birds. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike, just a question from me. What is the, the incidence of, of leaky sheds? Is it more than we think or how do you find that in practice? I've, I've, one of the things we do in the States with our poultry companies all of them do uh, tightness tests at least once a year. It's so almost a requirement to grow chickens in the state with the poultry companies is that, nope, we have to test your house tightness every year. Um, because what they've learned is that the tighter houses have lower energy costs, tend to generally produce better birds than the looser houses. Um, I think, and what that's done in general has made the typical grow in the U.S. much more aware of how, what his pressure test is, how tight his house is. But generally speaking, I would say people tend to overestimate their house tightness. Um, but that's what we have the app to sort of remind people, okay, where is your rating? You know, what rating is good? You know, green is good. You know, red, of course, is bad. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike, I have a question what was on the top side of the feeder line in the photo? That's the top side, I the think that was a feeder. I, uh, the, I think this right here, give me a second. Just for fun, I might as well do this, share my screen. These right here, you should be able to say, those are, those are chick feeders. They rotate down during the first 10 days and then they rotate back up. So it's a way to increase um, feeder area during, the, during brooding. Thank you. Now we've got one minute left. Have we got any last burning questions that people would like to type in for Mike? Oh, hang on, we do. Um, thanks Mike, great presentation. Do you check minimum vent tightness or maximum vent tightness? Which one is more critical? Minimum vent tightness or maximum ventilation house tightness? Um, I'm not really sure the question. Um, I would, I'm not sure this is what the, the question is, but house tightness is much more important during cold weather than hot weather. Having a little bit of leakage during hot weather won't hurt you as much as when you're doing minimum ventilation, when you're just bringing in a small amount of air, where that air is coming is very important. If 10% of my air you know, comes through cracks on a, uh, during tunnel ventilation, it's, a, it's an irritation, but it's not gonna really affect uh, my birds in a bigger sense. Uh, Mike, another one for you, how does this relate relate to free range facilities when we sacrifice the tightness of our sheds by being required to open our pop, our pop outs at day 17? The, 
long story short, the key to a um, free range shed is to have it to be a neutral pressure shed where that our ability to bring in air is not determined by negative pressure. So what we would do is be forcing air in through a series of positive pressure inlets, pushing air into the house. So we direct air along the ceiling and down and the, the exhaust fans run just enough to maintain no pressure or a slightly positive pressure. So whether the pop holes are open or not, we're not pulling air in through our pop holes. And that's the challenge is people are, again, this is an hour lecture, people use negative pressure in a free range house and you really can't because it will never be tight. You want to use more of a neutral pressure where you control more of the amount of air you're pushing in and the air you're pulling out with two different fans. So it takes about twice the amount of energy. 